What do these people all have in common? Lads, what do the what does Kobe Bryant have in common with Sir Tom Finney? What does Sir Tom Finney have in common with Ronnie Corbett? What do you think it is? Can you figure it out? Okay, Stephen Hawking. What does Stephen Hawking have in common with Diego Maradona? Come on, you give it a try. Just shout something. Dead. Did you say they're dead? You're right. Every single one of them is dead. That's what I'm asking you today. Can you work this problem out, okay? On the board, we've got Ronnie Corbett, Richard Attenborough, Kobe Bryant, Diego Maradona. What have they all got in common with one another? What did, what did Kobe Bryant do? He was a basketballer. What did Ronnie Cor Corbett do? Do you know what Ronnie Corbett did? He made people laugh. What about this man? Do you recognize him? What famous film was he in? The Titanic, okay? Stephen Hawkins, what was he famous for? Yes, yeah, scientists, okay? So what do all these people all have in common? There's something they all have in common and it's something you also will have in common with them one day. There's your clue. It begins with D and it ends in D. They've died, exactly, they're all dead, all of them. Now I find that fascinating because as we can see, you've got Stephen Hawking, one of the smartest brains in the world. We've got Kobe Bryant, one of the most gifted athletes in the world. Funny man, all this gifting, all this talent, and yet the grave claimed them. And that's a scary thought. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what, where you've come from, what your pedigree of life is, how good looking you are, how smart you are, the grave claims all. Now would you like some good news? Here's the good news. Even though there is a grave that awaits every single one of them, there is one man who beat the grave. Do you know what his name was? You've got it, Jesus. Jesus on the cross died for your sins. All the wrong, what, what's your name, sorry? You don't want to tell me. My name's Joe. All the wrong things that Joe's done, all the lies, all the times I've made my wife cry, all the times I've lied, all the wrong things I've looked at, all of that rottenness was put on Jesus, and on the cross he died there for my sins. He was put in a tomb, and then one day went by, stillness in the tomb. Two days went by, stillness in the tomb. What happened on the third day? He came out, he beat the grave. And that's really important, because if you died, and then three days later rose from the dead, I would listen very carefully to what you have to say. I think you're the most amazing person if you rose from the dead. And that's why we listen to Jesus. He's the only one to do it. Elvis is dead, Michael Jackson is dead, Buddha is dead, Muhammad is dead, Gandhi is dead. But Jesus is alive, and that's why we put our trust in him. He's the only one to beat the grave, and you'd be very wise to listen to him when he says, come to me, I'll give you eternal life, I'll forgive you of your sins, and I'll, I'll just change your world. Here's a question for any atheists out there. If there's anyone who's skeptical, here's my question for you. What would you think of me if I said to you, Harry Potter is a terrible book? What if I said, Harry Potter is the worst book in the world? What would you say to me? It can't be that bad, you do it can't be that bad because it's sold millions. That's a very good statement. It can't be. What if I said Harry Potter is a terrible book and I've never read it before? What would you think of me then? Yeah, you'd say read it first and then make a judgment. Please don't ever say the Bible is a load of rubbish. It's a fairy tale without reading it first. And I'll give anyone who's not too shy a portion of the Bible right now. Just come and take it from my hand, and you can have it for free if you're willing to read it. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. She's not going to read it. You never know. Yeah, I do.